Hey everyone, so today I have the cruelty free beauty tag for you. I was just thinking to myself a couple days ago, I really wish there was a cruelty free tag going around. And then Ashley, um, one of my friends here on YouTube, posted one and I loved all the questions. She found the questions off of a blog, so I will have Ashley's channel and the blog and the questions, what questions, all down below in the description bar um, if you want to, you know, see that because credit where credit is due. But, um, yeah, I really like the questions and I'm really glad she posted this and I'm excited to answer them as well. So there are nine questions and um, yeah, let's go ahead and get into it. So number one is how long have you been on your cruelty free journey? For me, it's been about four years. Um, at the beginning, I was not as well, I guess, educated about the topic as I am now. Not saying I'm perfect, but um, you know, at the beginning, I really didn't know what, you know, selling in China really meant and I didn't know a lot of different things and I know more now like before I didn't know that you know just writing on the label not testing on animals doesn't exactly mean that so I've come a long way um, but it's still the goal that I've had over the last four-ish years um, and I also really like how that is worded your cruelty free journey this is just a side note but you know everyone starts their cruelty free path at a different spot you know everyone starts at a different area in their life um, and you know, they might have everything in their collection is not cruelty free and have to start, you know, from scratch or vice versa. Everything is or whatever, a mix. But, um, you know, depending on where you start, you're going to have a different path. But it's all for the same kind of message and the same idea. So I really like that. Yeah. Okay. Number two, what made you decide to go cruelty free? I got into the beauty community um, about four years ago, I got more interested in it and there was a girl and she posted a video and I believe it was for a like class assignment, but basically what she did is I can't find the video. I'm still looking for it. I've been looking for this video for years. So maybe one day I will find it because that would be really fun to go back and watch like just for myself. But she took everything. She took her hair products, her skincare, her nail polish, her makeup, everything, you know, like beauty, cosmetic, you know, just beauty products she put them all on the floor and she sorted them on you know which brands test on animals and which brands don't and for me you know the majority of her products were tested and so for me that was like oh my goodness and then also majority of the brands that do test on animal I was realizing were brands that I had you know like L'Oreal and Revlon and things like that just brands that I didn't know tested on animals Pantene you know all that stuff so Seeing all that made me realize, oh my gosh, like, I am as, I'm not like guilty, not like it's, you know, she's guilty, but I'm just as guilty of having as many products as she does that are not cruelty free. So then I did that. And after seeing that split, I was like, wow, I really need to, you know, this is important to me. I really want to make some changes. So that's kind of how um, I decided. And I also just did research and educated myself about what really goes into testing products on animals. And it's not, you know, making them wear blush it's it's pretty brutal and I just don't think there's a need for it especially because there are other methods out there I just feel like it's not necessary so that's kind of what made me decide to go cruelty free what is the hardest product to find a cruelty free dupe for I feel like it's getting easier now um, and you know there are options out there but I would say for me personally it's hard for me to find a good foundation I um, have kind of a weird skin tone to match I'm fairly light but I'm also neutral I'm not really pink I'm not really yellow um, when it comes to foundation so that's tough for me just on any range um, but also I'm oily so a lot of foundations break down I really need something that holds well so that's something that is difficult I mean I have found really great foundations I love the Urban Decay one I love the Tarte one um, <clears throat> but you know I've always heard oh try the Estee a uh, lot or double wear or try the you know uh, what is that one from makeup forever velvet matte whatever and it's like I wish I could but I'm not going to support those brands so I feel like that's kind of hard otherwise I feel like everything is pretty accessible out there um, okay the next question what product or brand do you wish was cruelty free I would say for me I wish like L'Oreal Maybelline or Revlon were cruelty free um, because I a lot of the things that I buy um, 
are a little bit more expensive than they really should be. You know, sometimes I do have to go to a high-end eyeliner that works, you know, in my waterline when I know that, you know, there are good ones at the drugstore, but I just don't support those brands. And I just think that for an everyday person who maybe isn't aware of cruelty-free and what that means, um, if they're going to the drugstore and just picking up a foundation like the L'Oreal, whatever, that matte foundation that everyone seems to love that I really wish I could try. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, if any woman just goes, or man, goes and, you know, picks that up and then finds out later, you know, what cruelty-free means, I feel like it can be discouraging because those are really big brands that are pretty much found anywhere. And having to cut those out can be, you know, overwhelming. Um, so, I mean, there are other options at the drugstore, don't get me wrong, you know, NYX and Milani and Wet n Wild. And, you know, there's a lot of options, but... I feel like those ones are kind of hit and miss and what stores carry them. So I would love to see, you know, just one even, just L'Oreal or Maybelline or Revlon just be cruelty free at the drugstore to make it more accessible to more people. Um, okay, number five, what is your Holy Grail cruelty free brand? I have a couple. Um, I really like Tarte. Tarte is owned by a parent company that does test. I don't really have an issue with that. I still support brands that have a parent company that tests. Um, that's just my philosophy, that's my personal opinion. If you think otherwise, I think that's great. Um, at the end of the day, we are all supporting the same idea. Don't hate on me. But, um, so I really love Tarte. I really like Too Faced as well. I think they have really nice products. Um, I like Urban Decay quite a bit too. And then, you know, from the flip side, on the drugstore side, I really love NYX. I find that NYX is coming out with even more and more dupes of high-end things, which is awesome because then it's lower price and it's still cruelty-free. So yeah, those are my favorite brands, I would say. Um, name of one cruelty-free brand you may not have heard of. Um, I would say Essence. And Essence is sold at Ulta, but now it's starting to be sold at Target too, which is really awesome if you are in the U.S. I know Essence is a bigger brand and has more options if you're, you know, in some places in Europe and other countries. But in the U.S., they are now starting to be carried at Target, and they have different products than they do at Ulta, so that's really cool. Um, and yeah, that's something that's, I mean, it's really cheap, and some people, I think, kind of overlook things that are really, really cheap because they think that they're going to be crap. And I mean, yeah, it's hit and miss, but they do have some really great products. I mean, my favorite mascara is from there, and yeah, they have some nice stuff. So I would say Essence is one maybe you haven't heard of. Okay, number seven, are you vegan? If so, how long, and have you had any struggles? I personally am not vegan. I do buy things with, you know, thinking about the animals in mind. I So for one thing, I'm lactose intolerant, so I don't do dairy. Um... I also don't eat red meat, maybe like occasionally I'll have like bacon or something, but um, I really don't eat red meat. I really only eat chicken, turkey, or fish for the most part, um, and I eat a lot of eggs. So anyway, um, but if I do buy, you know, like all the, egg, the eggs I buy, they are more expensive, but they are grass-fed chickens. Like they don't have anything gross in them. If I buy my meat, um, I try to buy it local. Like we have a local butcher here. I live in South Dakota. Um, so, I mean, there are butchers everywhere. It's, it's very much cattle, you know, like go beef, go steak. So I don't really fit in here. Um, but I can, do, I can make do. So yeah, I'm not vegan, but I do, you know, think about the animals and do my best to buy locally and not support factory farms because that's not cool. Okay. Number eight, favorite vegan friendly local venue. I honestly don't know of one. I live in South Dakota, like I said, and it is not really vegan country, if you will. Um, I am from Minneapolis, though, and, you know, I do spend, like, my summers there, and I love Minneapolis, um, and I could, probably, I could probably find you a ton there just because it's much more aware of, you know, people who decide to be vegan, but um, where I live currently, there really aren't any. Okay, and then number nine, if you had 30 seconds to convert someone to the cruelty-free lifestyle, what would you say? For me, I really don't want to like convert someone. That's not my goal. I just want to, you know, like educate them. Um, so I would just say, you know, I don't buy products that are tested on animals because that means something to me. And if you want to know more about it, educate yourself. I, like I said, I don't like to push my opinions on other people. I just don't think that's fair because I don't like it when it's done to me. But um, I am very willing to be helpful. I know Ashley, the one I've talked about a couple times already. Um, you know, when she started becoming more interested in cruelty free and just had questions, she, she reached out to me on Instagram and just said, Hey, you know, 
I'm just curious, can you help me find, you know, what are your online resources of lists and, you know, brands that you like and, you know, just help with resources and things like that. So that was definitely an awesome conversation we were able to have and I'm definitely more than willing to help, you know, find those resources and everything and help someone with their journey and talk about them and support them and everything. But I don't think it's my place to convert them. I would just say educate yourself, like really learn what it means to test things on animals and then decide for yourself if you think that is necessary or not. Because for me, I don't think it is. Um, so yeah, that's what I would say. So those are the nine questions uh, for the cruelty free tag. If you are cruelty free, I would love to know um, if you, you know, whatever stage in the process you are, it's definitely, like I said, a journey and you, everyone's on a different path. And that's totally cool. Um, and then if you don't make videos, but you want to answer the questions, I would love to hear your responses to all or just a couple of the questions, whatever you want to answer in the comments. I think that'd be really fun to kind of have that, you know, conversation with you. And if you do make video and you want to make this video, go for it. I'm that person to really like tag certain people. So go for it. Um, and let me know because I'd love to hear your answers and your take and everything like that. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you for watching and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.